Live from Dancing, it's the mouthpiece with Reed <laughs> I love it. Yeah, all right. Nice, nice. Ladies and gentlemen, how are we doing? Welcome to the mouthpiece. I'm your host, Brady Matthews. I was going to start with this and then do this because you say, what's up, brother? Right? Like my boy uh, Twitch, who's a TikTok phenomenon or a sketch. I'm sorry, sketch. Uh, but I didn't. That's okay. Uh, lots to get to. Lots to get to. Very exciting show. Very fun show. It's also my birthday tomorrow. So if anyone wants to go in the comments and buy me uh, some um, Michael Jordan cologne or uh, or just go to my cash app. Yeah. yeah or, or my Venmo. Yeah. You know, that's always, I'm like I'm like one of those teenage girls that just puts their Venmo yeah. at the back. You know what I mean? Do like a link in after bio, After they Brady. graduate college or high school, they're like, just don't give me anything. Just send me money. Money, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, how are we feeling? Good, great, grand. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good, even though, um, even though a sad passing today, a sad passing. O.J. Simpson, we're going to talk about that. Um, also, uh, Caitlin Clark is still in the news as well, making moves as she's about to go to the WNBA. This girl is on fire, and she can do no wrong, and we're going to talk about that as well. Also, is John Hurley on the move for UConn? The guy is, uh, he's, a, he's your A1 basketball coach, and everyone wants a piece of him, so we're going to talk about that as well. Cam Newton was on Club Shay Shay. He had, to, uh, he, had some, he had some interesting words about um, black and white quarterbacks, and we love a little bit of controversy here, and we're going to break that down as well. Also, uh, UFC 300 is look like it's shaping Woo! up, and we're going to talk to Raymond about Let's that. Go. Just Raymond. Um, Just Raymond. <laughs> but with that said, uh, let me introduce my all-star panel, please, if we can, to my left. He is our Valuetainment MVP. Ladies and gentlemen, please make a warm welcome for Chris Mano. Thank you. That is a warm welcome. I appreciate it. Awesome day. Uh, How are you, brother? I'm great, brother. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Brother. All right, brother. Excited to do this. Let's go. <laughs> All right, on. <laughs> Slamming Andre the Giant. Uh, <laughs> next to him, he has some of the best uh, good, the bad, and do we care clips I've ever seen. Look at these pythons. He's been working out really hard doing two-a-days. <laughs> The, guy is, over the guy is that guy. He doesn't drink at the bar anymore. He's just all about getting in shape. <laughs> he has the best chest hair fitness. this side of the 95. Water. Just got a fresh haircut. He goes by Raymond, but but today we call him Raymond Sherwood. Oh, there we go. Yep. Hey, Raymond. That was a great intro. That was a great intro. Thank you, Brady. Thank you. And uh, Malik Hudson, obviously, he does a lot of heavy lifting around here, but... Um, we uh, we got we got not a new guy, but he's filling in. He's also kind of new to the Valuetainment family. His cousin it's actually Malik. is one of my favorite Blackhawks players, Alex Debrinket. Uh, but is that but real? Right now, yeah, his cousin is Alex That's Debrinket. That's not true. Is true? But we have Jorge use the claps again. We have behind the computer keeping the show on track, wearing my Blackhawks jersey, the one and only. Daniel to bring it. I did not ah. know you. you could, yeah. Is this a serious thing? This is a serious wow. thing. Like, really? He and I, he and I really connected when I go. Oh. I go to bring it. I go like Patty Kane and like like Sharpie wow. and all those guys that won the Stanley Cup in like 2010 and 12. And he goes, yeah. He goes, that's my cousin. I'm like, wow. I will mouth kiss you right now, bro. <laughs> We're you know on the mouthpiece. Right. I mean, you know how yeah. important that is to me that we know is that's a, he's a celebrity. <laughs> yeah, it's a big deal. <laughs> Daniel's a celebrity, so you're being humble. About I've it. had people come up to me and go, "You're Alex DeBrinket's cousin. Can yeah. I get a picture of you?" Yeah. yeah. I have three cousins total. He yep. is one of the three. Wow. You, yeah, you kind of look like him. You guys have like the curly hair. Uh, yeah, you just look like it looks like I want to like snuggle up to you guys, you know, just like a little teddy bear, just cute little teddy bears is what you guys are. Uh, I just went off the rails. And I have no clue what I'm saying. <laughs> Who's a um, cutie? Oh. Who's a cutie? Thank you, Jorge. Thank you, Jorge. That's what I when I look at you. Yeah, I just want to give you a big hug, and also tell your cousin thank you for winning Stanley Cups for us. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. And I miss him. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you're listening, please come on the show. <laughs> With that said, we did lose um, we did lose someone in the uh, Hollywood. Uh, Hollywood, uh, what do you want to call him? Is that what is you call Hollywood? Is he, is That's he, is like the third thing we know, know him he, for. I don't even know yeah. how we you know break him down. We know for what, a lot of things. I don't yeah. even know how you break down uh, Orenthal Simpson. Um, uh, what Better known as the juice. The juice. Yeah, the juice. What, what is your guys' take? Are we <laughs> sad about this? Uh, I mean, coming from a guy that was a legend at USC, played for the Buffalo Bills, then he was a, he was a Hollywood quote-unquote movie star in yep. one of my favorite Naked movies, Guns. The Naked Gun. Yep. Knew right? It. Right? He was in The Naked Gun, which is fantastic. Yep. Hertz commercials when I was a kid. Hertz yeah, commercials. Yeah, he was everywhere. Sure. Yeah, yep. he's jumping over everything just to yep. get to his terminal. Yep. yep. 
And then he uh, does his thing with his wife. Uh, <laughs> he does his which is, thing. Which is, <laughs> yeah. Which is, He's just doing know, his thing, you know, no big deal. <laughs> which is, uh, you know, it's frowned upon. And uh, also, 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 that was on CNN, like, every single day when I was growing up yeah. for, like, a it's whole year. The crazy part is it's still talked about. I mean... It's probably going to be talked about a lot more, but hey, there's wow. me and my buddy O.J. Wow. Simpson. <laughs> Funny story about this. I what flew the out hell to, is that, Ray? I flew out, yeah, I'm wearing a kimono. First off, my outfit's insane. He kind of looks like Kamala Harris <laughs> with a, like, without a wig. You know yeah, I, mean? I ran into him at a restaurant in Las Vegas. <laughs> this was in Las Vegas. Um, I flew out. It was actually uh, my buddy Chase's fight. He was in the UFC. We went to the Apex. This was the pr night prior, and O.J. invited us, uh, a bunch of UFC guys, to the table. What? And we, and we were just sitting down talking with them. Fun fact, I'm going to break some news right now. Uh-oh. Um, we were sitting down with OJ and his family, and then one of my friends, a non-disclosed, I will not say anything, that's actually very close to OJ, and at the time, Coolio. Oh, of course, The rapper yeah. who passed away as well. Yep. And Coolio was alive at the time, and uh, she ended up telling me pretty much this is off the record. I mean, not, uh, well, it's not off the record anymore, uh, that Coolio, uh, OJ told Coolio it wasn't him. It was his older son, Jason Simpson. Yeah, see, I call bullshit on that because I was listening to um, I was listening to um, ESPN Chicago this morning, and they were breaking it down too. And they said they said uh, Cap and Hoodie. I listen to those guys all the time. Shout out to those boys. They were saying that um, Cap went golfing with one of OJ's buddies, and OJ's buddy. We can't say the name or anything like that, but OJ's buddy asked OJ. He's like, "Did you do it?" And OJ says, "Do you think I did it?" And then OJ looks at him. He goes, "I did it." And then he grabs his nine and then goes out to his ball. Well, he's just joking around at this point. He's going to do whatever he can to protect his older son, too. Well, too yeah, but also, you know so, what was even creepier is when they did that 60 minutes. That's something O.J. would do. But hold on. But they <laughs> Classic did that, O.J. Yeah, but they did that 60-minute <laughs> interview with O.J., remember? And the girl answers the door. Can you find this, Daniel? Yeah, Maybe? this is I don't know. Crazy. This might be too hard to yeah. find. But um, he opens the door, and he has a knife, and he goes like this. Oh, oh. <laughs> you know, he, like think, too soon, OJ. You, yeah. you know, yeah. I think the general rule is when you write a book called "If I Did If it, I Did It," yeah. you probably did it. Totally. You know what I mean? And That's he, like catching your kid that has flour all over his face, yeah. and you're like, I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. All I'm not saying good, is, not a good look. I had a reputable source. I was sitting with OJ and you know his family, and I of believe course. Jason was sitting right across from me as well. And the source was that Jason did in fact do it. Yeah, I mean the way they broke it down too, because I got, I, dude, never I, heard of Jason Simpson. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Really? Why? Why he's the perfect culprit? His son also had like, um, I guess, mental health issues, and got fired from a couple of restaurant jobs. Yeah, he was a chef. Yeah, I Correct. guess a couple of knives were missing or something, and one of them actually happened to add up to the one that that Nicole Brown got killed on, from. Guys. Yeah, but Come everything on. about OJ after that gave me the impression like, oh, yeah, this guy could definitely do that. Like, beforehand, he was like a model citizen. Yeah. And after that, you start to, like, look into some of his behaviors, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's a little sus. Like, I think he probably – that that's, like, something a guy like that would say. You know what I mean? Totally. I mean, O.J. was all over the place. And yeah, then for sure. When he came out, when he, like, came – then also he gets arrested again. Right. He yeah. gets arrested again for, for – um, So he memorabilia stole his stuff. own memorabilia his, back. His own memorabilia, went to jail, got out for best behavior. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. remember this? This went viral because it was on Howard <laughs> Stern. He goes, what's up, Twitter world? Right? That was Yo, his, that was, that that was just, his like, viral NBA, thing. That was just a makeup call. Right. They realized we we let him go on the last one. <laughs> this is a makeup yeah. call, and they just got him for getting his own memorabilia back. But you know, you know what I heard too for the for the funeral. I heard that they're gonna have a, a, a white knife. they're gonna have a white Bronco for a hearse. Oh Jesus, that's terrible. That is actually <laughs> look at that. So a report. Yeah, what's that, what's oh the background? God. So a reporter came, that, to, came to interview him, and that's how he answered the door. Daniel, wouldn't you say that's a little Jeez. too soon if you're gonna get interviewed? Wouldn't you say you, wouldn't you want to pull out a different prank? Maybe I don't know. Put some tape on the door and let her walk through it. Something different, right? Right? Yeah, classic comedy, OJ. This yeah, guy. classic OJ. You classic know what I mean? comedy. Yeah, it, what he does, you know? That's awful. He's like, let me handcuff you. Let's see where we go from here. I mean, yeah. if you look at him in the naked gun, the d he does have a sense of humor, Brady. He was hilarious, dude. When he went down he, those stairs and then flew he off He constantly the died in the naked gun. <laughs> but he, got, he constantly did. Yeah, died. I wasn't around to see him when he was, like, at his peak, like, playing ball and doing the Hollywood stuff. But apparently he literally is, like, the last guy anybody expected that from. Like, he was the perfect, like, celebrity, they said. Like, yeah. he would mix, like, he was the first guy to, like, integrate black and white. Like, he right. got roles like that. He 
would hang out with different crowds. And then for them, I mean, for that to happen. He was a super nice guy when I met him, too. He was he super charming. Me to sit with him and his very, family. Right. Very charming you know yeah, stuff. very, very nice guy. And you know what's funny? He's actually been spotted at, I saw him again at AMSO in Fort Lauderdale. He was big no. down here in South Florida. What was that? He was, he was always walking around down here. This was a couple years ago. OJ was always around. He was talking to all the young girls. He loved the girls. Of there was course. one girl that I knew. That was like OJ hits me up all the time to come hang out. Do you think when She's he like do you think when he invited girls over to his place, for like, sure. I hit all the knives. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> you know what's crazy? <laughs> that, I always told the girls Have like, oh well, if you're you hanging out, juice. I always said if you're hanging out with OJ, well, it's been nice knowing you. <laughs> no, no, totally. And that whole chase happened like right in the middle of like this crazy summer when I was like eight years old. The Knicks and the Rangers were both in the finals the yep. same year. They yeah, share yeah. a building, yep. and they kept cutting out of the Knicks and Rangers games to show me OJ in a Bronco, and I'm a little kid like, yo, put my game back on like right. what's going on about right now this white bronco. and i didn't realize the like the importance of that at the time but holy crap like i mean it, it literally was probably the first um uh internet quote-unquote sensation or like the biggest phenom stuff like that that just like like hit off like oj the whole bronco going down the freeway yeah. people like going on the overpass just to get a glimpse of it like it was airing on every channel was, at the was, same time it was not just it was not just like you know local <clears throat> news but it was like worldwide news yeah. People yeah. were watching it. You know well, what I mean? If you remember, dude, that's like the equivalent of like a, he was like McCaffrey level good. Like he was the best back in the league. Hall of Famer, like 2,000 yard season. Yeah. Like he was really good. He, there he was wasn't a, some like scrubby player. During the 1985, um, the Bears season, it was uh, on the sidelines. I was watching highlights because I'm a dork. Uh, and I look over and guess who was the announcers? It was Dick Buckus, OJ Simpson, and um, Caitlyn Jenner. Wow. Weird, right? Well, well Bruce Jenner at the time. Of course, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my yeah. fault. Yeah, let's get that my right. Fault. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> I'm going to get nailed on that <laughs> in the comments. Get it right, stupid. <laughs> um, anyways, anyways, how do we feel about the O.J. Simpson thing? Are we okay? Is he going? What do you think? Is he going up or is uh, he going He's down? on the elevator down right now. He's man. going on the elevator down? Uh, yeah. Can you imagine yeah. that talk? God's like, let's put your game tape in real quick, huh? And he's like, which <laughs> one? <laughs> 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 which game we talking about? I don't know. If, if God's a big fan of the naked gun, he might be. You know, but what if he's so smooth to God and God's like, this guy's pretty This good. guy's great. No, when I met him, he was great guy. Yeah. He brought us over. Which sure. Funny part is one of the fighters. Give me right home, Raymond. One, one of the fighters, too, was actually, uh, he was drinking a literal <laughs> glass of OJ. And he's like, oh, OJ. And he was like, made a no. joke about it. And I was like, I go, this guy's great. I you go, know he's got to go home, though, and just put his hands in his head. And he's like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like, I had it all. Oh, I had it all. Shit. Goldman. He still, he still did good. He yeah. Still get, he did a Anyways. good job. Uh, moving on to basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a nice transition over. <laughs> Smooth segue. <laughs> Thank you. You got Thank a banana you. to stab anything? I don't know. Right? Listen, then we'll end on the OJ thing. Um, <laughs> and I heard they're going to use a white Bronco for a hearse. That's what I heard. Yeah. Hmm. It's a good time to capitalize on some marketing right now. I said the joke before and no one heard it, and I thought it was so good that I said it again. <laughs> Still Nobody. nothing. Still nothing, Daniel. Do you see how hard comedy is? It's tough. It's not good. It's, it's tough. Just stick to sports. Just we all can't sports. be as good as OJ. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Damn, He's a comedic dude, you brought, genius. You brought the fucking juice today, huh? Yeah. Literally. <laughs> oh! Uh, literally. I, I walked into that. Yeah. I walked You're doing that. good, Brady. All right. On top of it. Let's get serious, guys. Uh, man, you have stuff on Caitlin Clark, right? She's still shiny, even though the tournament is over. She's heading off to the WNBA. She's not going to go for a fourth season at Iowa. She's going to get... More money in endorsements than she would um, if she would have just stayed uh, for her last year, but she's not going to do that. What do you got for us? What, what, are they, what are they saying? Well, it's just the impact that she has on everything. And she, we saw the impact that she had on the tournament, record-setting levels of viewership. Uh, Iowa's actual the – the, the state of Iowa brought in $82 million in – revenue just based upon her being there is a study that came out yesterday but what, what, what i want to talk about is how the las vegas aces already decided to move their game yeah. out of the arena that they normally play in so that they can capitalize on caitlin clark coming to town once and sell eight thousand more tickets are so they going to go to the t-mobile or this because i'm they, not they, sure they used to play at the max center i know that we're yeah you, i'm, you I'm not sure plays. exactly where they're where they're moving to but it's a one game thing and it's just and it's funny is that they have an Indiana Fever haven't even drafted Caitlin right. Clark yet, but they decided we're, they're going to and we're going to make the move. And then the Indiana Fever, it came out yesterday that 36 of their 40 games will be nationally televised this year when one of their games were nationally televised last year. So, I mean, I'm telling you, this girl is having an effect beyond basketball. People who don't really follow sports are, are aware of her now and her name is a hot name. 
So it's going to be interesting to see if she can kind of like vault the WNBA into somewhere they haven't been before. You know how bad, you, like, honestly, I kind of feel bad for Paige Becker at UConn because, <laughs> because everyone's kind of like, all right, your turn to shine. Yeah, she's going to crush go, it, though. Let's go, girl, because, like, you know, she can shoot, but I don't know if she can – she can do what it's like when Scottie Pippen took over for Jordan when Jordan retired for a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And everyone's right. like, "Well, Scottie's just as good." And you're like, and then you watch, you're like, "No, he's fucking not." You know what I mean? <laughs> no, he's not. You get to the you get to the uh, conference finals, but he never got to like you know the championship game. I feel right. like it's a similar aspect when uh, LeBron James, of course, was at that level. But you had uh, Car- Carmelo Anthony coming in, they were like, "Oh, but he's gonna do it." And you just watch Carmelo have some shine and just mm-hmm. oof, for sure just See, drop that just right shows, off. It just shows the. Um, how hard it is to be on that level of phen- phenomenal. Because Caitlin Clark, when she had big games in college, totally showed up. It was must-see TV. And a lot of hype that the, that happens when they go to the next level, it fizzles out. So it'll be interesting to see if Caitlin Clark can go play for the Indiana Fever. Nothing against Indiana Fever. <laughs> but, you know, I, they haven't made a lot of splash in the WNBA. They're not like the, they're not like the sky in Chicago. Sure. They're not like the, you know, the sparks. But her, her skill set seems to be one that will transfer well because she's not big and overly physical where you're trying to bring that to the WNBA against grown women and see how it goes. She's a step-back shooter. She can create space. She's, you know, she's not going to have to rely on her. I, I really think the comp with Steph Curry is a good one because he's never been physical, just been able to find, sure. find ways to create room and create his shot. And he can make it from anywhere. Like her, her range is limitless, just like Steph's. So that should be cool, man. I think I think her skill set transfers well. Do I think she's going to come in right away and light the league up? I wouldn't be shocked if she had a couple of like real big games as a as a rookie. But she she's going to be all right. Wait, Ray, what's the over under that she gets knocked on her ass almost every game? Like, oh, well, who, you know, there's going to be girls just just coming just to literally just I, knock her fucking. I, head I think off. you nailed it. She's a step back shooter. Um, I don't know. It's going to be tough, but she's going to get very physical. I think people are more going to be gain uh, you know gunning for her. Than anything, so you are going to probably see some physicality and trying to, you know, hey, you're in the big leagues now, type, right? You know, and, well, look, uh, we've we've seen this. It's going to be interesting. Sorry to interrupt you. We we've seen this before. They're going to in. They're not going to let them beat her up. They understand, and it's like the uh, quarterback in the NFL. If you're the cash cow that people are coming to see, they're not going to let you get hurt. So we changed a million rules to keep Tom Brady and Mahomes on the field. Don't be shocked at all if they try to make a point right away. The refs to be like, yeah, you're not going to bully this girl. She's our she's our golden girl right now. We need people to watch. If she's got 36 games on TV. And you got and Diana Tarazi comes in and injures her game one. What the hell does that do for anybody? So yeah. watch. I, I, we we heard Jordan rules before. We've seen Tom Brady rules. Don't be shocked if Caitlin gets a little leeway with those. Uh, It'd be interesting to see where uh, what her career looks like uh, in the league after like two years, and where Angel Reese's career after two years. I know they're much different in play, but I think Angel Reese might be going to a better team than the Indiana Fever. Think I forget who's number two, but this is again. Well, I don't watch the. I think WNBA she's projected to go about six. Yeah, I'm not, I, think, I think she's projected to go about. Oh, is six. she? Oh, okay. she'll go to an even better team, like you said. Yeah, it's like the lower you go in the, well, a lot of it is is need too. If of the course. team next doesn't need a three or a four, whatever she's going to translate to, they probably won't. Look at it. us talking WNBA and women's. What are what are the basketball? names? I didn't know that there was an Indiana. Daniel, what's feeder? happening? Yeah, well, that's why because of the la- the worst team in the league, probably. But Rip- you've probably heard of the Aces. Team. You heard of the Phoenix Mercury, the New York Liberty. You know all, that. You probably heard of the Minnesota you know those, Lynx. Yeah, no. You I, know, I I, I, I haven't ahead, heard of, fan of them. I I haven't heard of any of these teams. Sure. I'm not a big female basketball fan, but this chick interests me a lot. And right? She, yes, yep. dude. Yeah. She's got that star factor that even somebody that doesn't even watch basketball at all right i am intrigued you know and what's yep. weird is when when you have family members canceling plans on you just to watch your game yep that's weird and, yeah you're like you know what i mean i mean it's a funeral but okay fine <laughs> you know Did and that, like, don't worry about it. and again like steph curry she gives a million little girls who look at her the the belief that they can play like that like i don't have to be like the girl from um south carolina who's six seven Oh like, yeah, Blanca. Yeah, most, gir- <laughs> God. Street most girls. Most girls can't say I'm gonna grow up to be her, you know, and I can do that. Or Angel Reese is six two and a half. It's like that doesn't happen a lot. You can look at a Caitlin Clark and be like, Do I like to hoop? I'm not. I'm not overly, you know, physically superior, but I can shoot it. So girls are gonna believe that they can do that. So that's cool. That was like that's what Steph did. He changed the culture. She's definitely changed the culture, and she's definitely done something for women's basketball that has been needed to be done. You know, from day one, but they, I think they just couldn't find, I don't know if it's the right formula or if it's just really good marketing they have right now, but she is the one that's going to make the WNBA must see TV and that will compete with the NBA. The only problem is the WNBA, the girls don't dunk per se. There are girls that dunk, but not like the, the NBA, right? And it's a little, bit, NBA is a little dunk, bit faster right? of a game, but I think the WNBA, what she's going to bring is a little more finesse, a little more team play. 
but um, she will bring excitement because she shoots from half court and she makes it when it matters Let and me, when you need it the most. Can I ask you guys your opinion on something? Sure. If you had a choice to watch Steph Curry go off for like 13 threes in the night or a couple of like monster dunks from like a LeBron or a Vince Carter, what's more exciting to you, the three or the dunk? Well, see, one, I, I can't stand LeBron, so can you let's give me just a different say guy? Vince Carter. Oh, Vince Carter all day. Yeah, for the You'd dunks, rather see sure. Vince Carter dunks than like Steph Curry go yeah. off for like 14 I'd rather see, like, yeah. Dude, he's got 65 points right now, for and he's sure. just white. He's flaming hot right now. Don't care. Really? I'd rather see we Vince like Carter dunks. dunk over a guy. Yeah. I mean, can you play the, the clip of Vince Carter dunking over the guy in the USA basketball yeah. game? And yeah, how about the one France. where he goes underneath the leg? And, oh. yeah, yeah. Vince I mean, Carter see, was a... But to me, I saw Clay Thompson go 13 for 13 from three get 37 points in a quarter, and every time he touched the ball, he'd just pull it from anywhere. And I was like, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, but they're not doing that anymore. Yeah, but he's but, not. but I, I understand what you're saying. But because, that, I'm saying that's, when that's playing, Caitlin Clark's appeal. Like, correct. Like when Golden State had Kevin Durant, and then they had um, Kevin Durant, it was Steph Curry. I mean, Clay they had, Thompson. They had Clay Thompson, yeah. but they had those guys. And also they had some really good role players. Sure. That was must-see must see TV, too. Right. Um, and those guys weren't dunking on your head. They, those guys were just getting threes from everywhere. Right, but sometimes, sometimes you need, we need those some dunks. Physicality. Sure. We need, we need some understand. physicality. You need those dunks, but also, listen, I like. Remember, what, remember the dunk at the, the national championship from Purdue? I mean, they lost. Remember that we saw nasty. a library? Stupid, yeah. bounced off the rim. The guy like that. Yeah, that was crazy. That follow up. Yeah, the, the follow up yeah. dunk. Was nasty. Insane. That energy See, is just different. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's the stuff where I'm like, you know, that's what could get you. Just go watch this. Yeah. Watch this dunk. Yeah, this was crazy. Watch Vince yeah. Carter. This is Vin, this is prime Vince Carter. Look, he had full hair too. That was against France. Jesus, dude. Yeah, it was. Wild. Kind of looks like OJ. Probably the best in-game dunker I've ever seen. I he think. almost knocked the guy out, too, when he watched this. Look at this. The guy was like, I'm going to take a charge. Nope. <laughs> yeah, that was How's crazy. How's my nuts on your head? Great. Look at this. I love how the guy just accepted God, it. dude. <laughs> Holy cow. Dude, he was one of the best dunkers, uh, I think, ever in the NBA. Ever to play. Well, definitely in-game. Yeah. That's why a For lot sure. of guys can dunk, like, in a contest. But when you can do that in a game, that's wild. Yeah. Like, that's, that's incredible. Um. Moving on with the with a lot of a lot of moving pieces in college basketball, um, John Calipari was a huge disappointment for Kentucky. Um, he's on the move again. He's on the move. He just got the job for Arkansas, which I, I love the Arkansas program. They have a lot of history with a lot of great players, a lot of good memories with those guys. Here's my problem with this, and Mano, I want I want to get your take on this, and Chris sure. or Ray, I want your take on this mm -hmm. as well. Um, John Calipari is leaving Kentucky for a contract for so much money, right? He had a lifetime contract, and he's leaving for less money. Who, wh what? I'm just going to put it like this. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? And especially go to Arkansas when <clears throat> I think Kentucky, if you look at the numbers, Kentucky already has way more championships. Okay. Uh, and, they're, and they're right in there with royalty with UCLA, mm -hmm. Kentucky, Connecticut, North Carolina, UCLA with 11, Kentucky with eight, Connecticut with six, North Carolina with six. Why are you going to Arkansas when you can just, just start a new season with Kentucky? All right, so my feelings on this is this. Obviously, he – hasn't had championship success like you may think he would with all the guys that have been through that program. Granted, he only gets the guys for three months and they're gone. They're all the one and done guys come to Kentucky. And they come to Kentucky for Coach Cal. Let's not get it twisted. You know, as soon as he leaves, watch. I would be very stunned to see if they have a monster year. It almost reminds me of Jay Wright at Villanova. So guys were coming to play at Villanova to play with Coach Wright. He leaves. They're not even in the tournament anymore, right? So think about stuff like that. His contract now... It says he had a lifetime contract to Kentucky. It was a 10-year, $86 million deal, which is a monster deal. Yeah. But it's not really a lifetime deal. They just expected that that would be the end of his coaching career Correct. and he would leave. Right. He's going to Arkansas for what's rumored to be about $8 million. He was making 8.5 at Kentucky. So it's not a huge drop-off, and he's got incentives that would give him the opportunity to kind of pass that if he does everything right. So he's got a chance to make money. He's going to get a ton of NIL backing at Arkansas. And I've actually even heard that Jerry Jones, Cowboys owner, who's an Arkansas alum, a lot of his donations has gone to kind of bringing him in. And that's going to – he's going to be compensated fine. He's going to bring five-star recruits with him like he's done everywhere. But, but don't he's, you yeah, – but, but people are comparing him to his last name, like we were talking about earlier. I was mm -hmm. just joking. Go ahead. Like a mafia boss in okay. a way. When he played for – when he went to UMass, uh -huh. a lot of these kids academically couldn't play. Sure. When he went to Memphis, Derrick Rose was – Academically uneligible gotcha. to play, for sure. Right, and they still played. He gets away with a lot of stuff, dude. He gets a he gets away with a lot of. He, Marcus Camby, right here, it says accepted 
accepted large sums of cash and services, not the least administrations. Oh, administrations of a prostitute from a couple of scallywag agents. But look, if we this written in the but if we start, yeah, what, what if, we start if we start blackballing coaches who do bad things to get guys on campus, we're not going to have any good coaches anymore. You, you watch a guy like Rick Pitino, who it's happened at multiple places, and he gets new jobs. Right? It's happened to Bill Self at Kansas. It's happened to Bruce Pearl and Jim Calhoun. These legendary coaches who have had issues. Like it, it sucks to say. But I've been on recruiting trips. How do you think they get you there? Yeah, of course. They get hot girls and they they give you things that you probably shouldn't be able to it, get. It and the thing is, now it's all, all legal. Yeah, and hey, now Daniel, it's all legal. Daniel, can you pull up his recruiting tape, please? Can you pull up Calipari's recruiting tape? I want you, Ray, I want you to take on What do you mean yeah. recruiting tape? You'll see. This okay. is his recruiting yeah, it, tape. It I didn't want to. I didn't time. want to show this, but this happens all the time. This is recruiting. I tape. know what's happened also in recruiting trips. Oh, I'm sure college you... as well as the pros. Do I know course. agents. Do I know NFL agents the same getting kind of... college people to sign do with wrestlers them. Go I know to... where they take them. <laughs> it's of crazy. Course. And it's like, but to think that Calipari is the only guy doing it is bananas. Yeah, no, everyone's, he just happens everyone's to doing win. this. Exactly. Wrestlers everyone's go through it. the same thing, sort of recruiting? Yeah. It depends we had, on a, the we had a wrestler get transported to the hospital because our coach was like, show him a good time. And then all of a sudden our coach uh, went up to our dorm and was like, what are you fucking guys crazy? You and guys are supposed to be bringing him to the hospital. If you just <laughs> think about the guys who have come while, while Daniel brings that up, just think in, in five seconds. D. Rose, Devin Booker, Julius Randle, John Wall, DeMarcus Cousins, A.D. Yeah. The list doesn't end. And they're not going there for any reason other than – Coach Cal, because yeah. when I'm, he's gone, the program goes down. Obviously, yeah. Can you play that, Daniel? Here's his recruiting tape. Can you turn it up? <laughs> I told me one time. Mm -hmm. Don't let yourself you do a get good attached Danero. to anything you are not willing to walk out on in 30 seconds. Oh, we have no time. volume on this? Ugh. Play it again. I don't care. I told me one time. There he is. This is John Calipari's recruiting tape. People Don't let yourself get players. attached to anything you are not willing to walk out on in <laughs> 30 seconds heat. flat if you feel the heat around a corner. Now, if you're around me and you got to move when I move, <laughs> how do you expect this to keep heat, a, the movie, right? From heat? a marriage? Yeah, but it's going to get captured. That's, yeah, oh, that's an interesting that. point. Look how young he is. Uh, yeah, he played that sometimes, and they were like, what does that mean? And he's like, you know what it means. And then they would have practice. Oh. Weird, right? I don't know. So I, that's why I say he's like the mafia. He's like a mafia coach. He's like the mafia don. He's basically. old school. I don't know, man. Him leaving for less money and then he's going to Arkansas for a smaller contract just smells like the guy was in some serious heat and he had to get he, out. He was also I mean? getting no heated up by the by the fans on social media, like incredulously, because they expect him to win a championship every year, which comes with being one of the top programs in the country and comes with being one of the top coaches, but. But maybe it was just time for a change of scenery. He's not leaving for a ton less money. It sucks to say. Like, I mean, for us, half a million's a huge deal. But for Coach Cal, a half a million is nothing right now. And he's got the chance to make it back. So I don't think the contract status is – Do you is think they strong-armed him to, to, uh, to get him out? No. Kentucky? no. You don't think so? Really? I don't. Because nobody walks away from a better contract at a better school. It's not, but it's not a, you stronger. say a better contract, but it's $500,000. With, with, if he wins, he's going to make more than he made last year. And he's I, he's gonna get like we said he's gonna get recruits anywhere he goes. He's what do you think, Daniel? What's your what's your, what's your take? I gotta say when my cousin was getting traded from the shout Blackhawks, out to Alex to bring it. Yep, he chose the Detroit Red Wings because he was born and raised there and all of his family's there, as opposed to New Jersey. I think they were gonna pay him if not half a million dollars more. I think they were gonna pay him like a million or two dollars more, uh, but he decided to go with the wings because that was his home team so maybe this guy he likes arkansas's grassy fields or something also yeah, yeah. also arkansas doesn't have that pedigree where they're expected to light the country up every year you know what i mean like kentucky you go in there with the understanding that if you're like the yankees if you don't win you're on the hot seat at arkansas he goes in there and look maybe he can get away with a year where he wins the conference championship but goes out in the round of 32 and they'll give him a little free uh, a little freedom you know what i thought was interesting too is they showed the video of calipari being uh, introduced by the way their pyrotechnics were awesome <laughs> their pyrotechnics were incredible he's walking out through the tunnel the pyrotechnics are going nuts. jerry jones money. and then guess what <laughs> guess what they all stand up and give this the booster the booster that got him there a standing ovation i was like that's where we're at dude that's where we're at. It's not about players. It's not about coaches. It's about fucking Steve Phillips in, in the Jones. audience. You know what I mean? <laughs> Getting that guy with some cash into the stadium. Well, that's the thing. And it's NIL has made all these things that seemed taboo to us like 10 years ago. They're like normal now. Like there's an NIL budget. That's a big thing that brought him over too. His NIL budget here is going to be monstrous. So you use that. You get yourself recruits and – 
you build a roster. That hey, way. can you play the um, Daniel? Can you play the Rachel Nichols and, and Demarcus Cousins um, talking about this? Because I thought this is really interesting. Because Demarcus Cousins obviously played with him uh, at Memphis for sure. So I want to see because I think his take is really interesting. And also Rachel mm -hmm. Nichols, who who was great for ESPN, has a really good take on this as well. <clears throat> Can you turn it up, please? I think please? everybody's going to get a real taste of reality moving forward. Amen. We've seen this movie before with Kyle, where he goes, becomes the hot spot. I go. put Kyle Beautiful. and Deion Sanders in the same category. Yeah. Deion, Deion has the he, prime Deion effect. Deion will be gone by the way in a couple years. Thing with Arkansas will, will now be the hot spot. Thank Arkansas you. Arkansas will now have the number one recruiting classes coming in every single year. Beautiful. Arkansas will be full of celebrities. Good luck finding a replacement for Kyle because it's going to be very, mm -hmm. very hard. Dan Hurley's not going. Jay Wright is living his best life. There you life. go. That's the other guy who reminded me of Jay Wright. Even more no, no. money. He's not leaving. I also saw something about Brad Stevens. Brad Stevens ain't going nowhere. I think no, he's leaving. He's a beautiful place. office job with the Celtics. About Billy Donovan. It's going to be hard to convince any coach that has been to the ultimate level to then take a step down to go to the collegiate level. And it's not the collegiate level of old. This is a brand new monster. To think that it's going to be a line around the door of coaches that want to not only coach at this level and it's yep. 10 times the amount of work you now have to meet this standard of there being a championship Perfect. team every single year what we experienced in those 15 years of all right you can cut it will never experience so it, what i was thinking too is why won't rick patino um because now kentucky has a vacant a vacant spot well you think you think rick patino would go back home no he is home now he's in new york city with st john's and yeah. he just locked in but there I'm saying where he won their team is Nah, he's good where he's at, man. He just locked into a huge deal. He plays at the Garden every night. He's got a, a like an ascending St. John's roster that won 20 games this year in the Big East. Now, I think he's good where he's at, and he's had no reason to move. Like, I think if you would have tried to get him when he was coming off being down, you might have been able to get him for like a discount price, and he would have said yes. But now nah, he's fallen into a nice little situation yeah. in New York. Well, speaking of guys going to Kentucky, it looks like um, Dan Hurley also got – he got touched, and they said they would give him $11 million over five to seven years – and I don't think he's going anywhere. He's not going to leave Connecticut. He loves it there. You know, he's put he's put his um, he's put his stamp down on that on that on that team. So it'd be interesting to see where he goes. But I don't think Dan Hurley is going to go anywhere. Also, Scott Drew of Baylor was offered that job as well. Um, but I don't know. Well, it'll be interesting to see who goes to Kentucky, right? Right. So you said Jonte Porter is in some uh, hot water. What's your take on that? Well, yeah, we touched on this story a couple of weeks back. Jonte Porter is the forward in the NBA who kind of. It just coincidentally got sick and got hurt on days where his unders wound up being the biggest hits on DraftKings and FanDuel. And it came out yesterday that Adam Silver said that it looks like he could be banned from the NBA for life after this betting scandal. And I just think, interestingly, it comes out on the same day that Otani was cleared of all his, uh, you know, egregious betting uh, story. And it looks like his interpreter now is going to take the heat for that and... You know, I think it's interesting because, like in everything, I don't. I think it's more like a talent privilege. Like these guys are dealing with the same thing. But Shohei Otani is the face of a league, and he carries a country on his back. And it's just so interesting to me how they were able to make that one quietly go away. Yeah, well, we I called that, Ray. We you called did. that. Did you we did not? Before the Shohei me. Otani yeah. thing, and now his his uh, translator is basically looks like he might be going to jail. Yeah, he's yeah. going to face federal um, charges now. And they said Shohei Otani. Not only did they swipe this under the mat, but also he's squeaky clean. Yeah, yeah I nothing call happened. complete bullshit. But hey, that's, he doesn't speak he's, English. He's the so Elvis. He's literally the Elvis of um, baseball. Like he is the darling. He is the Jordan of basketball right now for baseball. Right. He can't leave. Right. He can't get arrested. Well, and it comes on right on the heels of him signing the biggest contract in North American sports history for seven hundred million bucks. So, like, if there was ever a bad time for this to happen to baseball, where you ever think maybe there's a way. They're making this quietly go away. It just coincidentally happened to be now. It's tough. It's do you think he to... goes? Do you think his translator goes to jail? Oh, one hundred percent, he does. For sure. How long does he go he's... to jail for? You think? Uh, well, he's going to go to club fed. Uh, yeah, I was. Gonna he's going to go to a nice yeah. cushy jail for a couple of years, and he's I think face he comes like out... maybe five ten, and then he'll five ten. Yeah, no, but he's going to get probation. And right. he'll come so out two and a half. And he'll come out early with the understanding that his family is good. He's good. Everyone needs a translator in jail, right, Daniel? You know that. <laughs> we all need a translator. <laughs> Big. Also, that, imagine that guy betting in jail with that guy. Yeah, jeez. I don't know, dude. Might might be a might be a good thing. Might be, a win, there. might be a win win for this yeah, guy. It could be good. You know what I mean? Also, you can get some good memorabilia from this guy too. He's like, listen, I'll get you if you don't if you don't mess with me in the showers, I'll get you a baseball and a bat. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'll <laughs> right? take care of you. That's it. You know, it's a win-win. They're all going to make a lot of money in there. I thought this was funny. Um, I saw this on Twitter yesterday. Bronny James compared to Mar Marcus Jordan. 
Ufa. <laughs> in college. <laughs> Look at this. Michael Jordan's kid is still better than Bronny James. Where's Malik? <laughs> yeah, where is Malik? Malik's in there. You got to give that some context, though. Marcus Jordan was a senior at this time. Yeah. And Bronny's this 18-year-old kid. Yeah. So. Okay. And Bronny's going to go to the NBA, probably G League, maybe. Or no shot. That, he's oh, going right to the oh, league, you, brother. You think he's going to go on an right actual team? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And look, I'm not saying that I, I think, think his talent warrants him going to a team. I, I, think, he'll think, go to, I think he'll go to a team, but I think he will. Look at Shaq's son didn't go right. Shaq's son's not, Shaq's not playing, though, still. Shaq's son. But son. what I'm saying to you is they're going to play him because LeBron is still playing and he's still effective. They're hard to compare. So you're telling me if Shaq was still playing, that his son would be playing? If Shaq was still one of the bullshit. best players there's no, in the there's league? There's no fucking way. There's no if way. If Shaq was L.A. Lakers Shaq and he had a son ready to come in, his son would have started if Shaq told him to. I totally I don't, doesn't matter. I mean, I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now, Bronny Why James, do you think the Nasus Antetokounmpo has a job right now. Yeah, Tell but he's, he's a ball boy. He doesn't actually play. So that's he, what he that's what Giannis that's a, what a towel and a basketball. So what do like, you think? You think Bronny is going to be like the focal point? He's just going to be I'm on the bench. I'm asking you. Listen to what I just said. I'm yeah. asking you. Is he going to play? He'll no. Get, he'll get minutes. He's not going to get minutes. No, nah, he'll get, get minutes. He's going to get a clipboard. He's going to get a clipboard. Well, there, you think there, there's and no gonna, yeah. way, bro? Here's, LeBron, right or wrong, is basketball <laughs> royalty. There is no way they're going to make his son embarrassed. They're not going to make him look bad. They're going to get him minutes whenever they can, and they're going to put him in the no most. No one's going to give up a draft pick to get Bronny James. Hundred percent, they are. Someone will. Not the Lakers. The, I didn't say the Lakers. Well, I said Bronny they're, James. You said last nobody. Time checked, last time I checked, LeBron James plays for the Lakers, does he not? He's yeah. Well, last time I checked, he worked his contract so that he has a player option for this year, so he can opt out and go anywhere he wants if he wants. So coincidentally, on the year where Bronny is able to come out, he worked his first player option since he's been a Laker into his contract. So he has the ability now to go anywhere he'd like to go. So a team drafts Bronny with the understanding that LeBron will follow him. LeBron's still a top five player in the world, and Bronny goes and does his You think LeBron James is a top five player right now? 100%. What? Put LeBron James on any team, and they're, a, con they're a contender, yes. LeBron James, top five player, right? Get the <laughs> Bro, it's, it's like Malik, it's, Malik, well, yo, no, it's, it's well noted. No, listen, people in the comments, let me know if you think LeBron James right now yes. is the top, is, is top five player. Do you I think? Totally disagree. Do you think anybody? Would, dude, dude, give me the give me the guy from Oklahoma. Give me the guy from Oklahoma. Who, give me Giannis. Let me ask you this. Give me, no, give who, me give me who, Ant. Give me give me Steph Curry. Give I, me I all know those you're ranting, but James. I hear what you're saying, and it sounds great. But what I'm telling you is, if Garbage. you were to go to the if you were to go to the playoffs right now, who wants to see LeBron James in a seven game series? Not me. Thank you. Don't That's care. what I'm saying. No team wants to see LeBron James. You, I'd rather see Shea in a, in a series than LeBron. Okay. I've seen LeBron win. Okay. I'm telling you, bro. you, you got to trust me. I'm just me saying on no one. one's going to pick up Bronny James. I would not want to draft him. Nobody's going to pick just, up Bronny James. You don't pick him up in the first round, right? At least give me that. No, I'm, I'm all right with that. Okay, I'm good. comfortable saying <laughs> that. But if, if <laughs> I think LeBron James comes to my team unquestionably, I wouldn't even be shocked end of the first round if someone does. If, how, you had, how if you're a team with multiple first-round picks, he's 6'2 and a half. He's a good defender. The sucky part about Bronny James' situation is there's a good chance that on merit, if he waited two or three years, he could actually play in the league. But now he's going to have to deal with that, that crutch that you only got here because your pop got you here, Well, he's gonna, sucks. He's going go, to go declare for the NBA draft. I think he won't get – I don't think anyone will really take a chance on him. I think he'll go back into the portal – and I think he'll go play for Ohio State. Can I tell State. you a story quick? 30 seconds? Please. There's a kid when I was training at IMG. He's a seven foot four kid from India, right? And they brought him over here on like some transfer pl uh, program. And Mark Cuban, of all people, because they decided to work out a deal, wasted a second round pick on this kid because he thought it would appeal to people in India. They'll more eyes on the Mavericks. It's a business decision. I didn't say LeBron James Jr. warrants getting right. drafted, but he's going to get drafted because if with him comes LeBron. That's that. There is the same effect as Caitlin Clark. What round you do you think Bronny James? I'm writing this down. What Go round do you think Bronny James is? Well, there's go? only two rounds, so probably the second round. Second round. But if a team has two or three first round picks, like the Knicks have a ton of first round picks. If I have the 28th overall pick mm -hmm. and I'm a team like like the Knicks, and I say I'll waste my 28th pick because I already got a first round pick early in the draft, and I can bring LeBron James here. I don't see any reason why a team doesn't do it. What a headache! Can you imagine getting LeBron James, one who's already nuclear? And then you get his son, you're like... But his son's like, his son's like the exact... What do you know about his son? He's a pleasant kid. He's never <laughs> said the wrong thing. <laughs> he's pleasant. Yeah. He's Chris, pleasant. When, when have you hung he's out a, with Bronny he's James? A, he's I'm a saying, nice but I've guy. seen him in the... Pre, in the but nice you say he, LeBron's nuclear. Like no, he's, I'm, he just gets saying, a ton I'm just of, saying in terms of... LeBron's like, kid is, is a sweetheart, man. He's nice. He doesn't, he doesn't make any trouble. Here we go with nice guys again. 
nice guy. Well, nice just, guys. I'm just nice. I'm just making a, a point against what you're saying. Like yeah. like you're saying it'd be like a big like he's no trouble. The kids gonna come in, be quiet. They said the same thing about OJ. Yeah. Oh. So. Oh, too, soon. too soon for that. Too right. soon. <laughs> Yo, if if he was Look smart, right. <laughs> if he was smart, he would become a them they first yeah. round draft They're pick in the now, WNBA, listen, baby. Daniel, now we're now, now you're we're cooking with gas, noggins, big guy. Now you're yeah. cooking with gas. You're on yep. something here. If Bronny, listen, once we get that trans league, we're we're cooking, baby. We're See, cooking. him and his son should be start the trans league together. Yeah, totally. There you go. He's in my starting five. That's it. <laughs> starting five trans Poor league. Poor Mano. He's like, dude, he's like, Shut I'm up. up here with Wayne and Garth, guys. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Jesus. That's so funny. All right. All right, moving on. Rasheed Rice Jesus looks like he's going to jail. Mano, what do you have on that? <laughs> 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 All right, so I'm going to try to tighten uh, this thing up right now. Come on. Obviously, uh, I have an affinity for the Chiefs. Their best receiver is uh, no, it's, it's, a warrant was out for his arrest uh, yesterday. He's facing <laughs> eight charges um, and six counts of collision involving bodily injury, one count of collision involving seriously bodily, oh serious God. bodily injury, bodily. and one count of aggravated assault. <laughs> um, all felonies. Uh, but all could be either jail time or fines. So I don't know how it plays out. I don't know if he gets <laughs> the best lawyer ever and ends up paying some monster fine because hopefully nobody was really hurt. And, you know, obviously that's the most important thing here. But, look, his, his lawyer, I'm sure, and his agent are probably going to work right now on how they can get him so out on – Kardashian lawyer. On, um, you know what weirds me out, too, is in Texas that weed is still illegal. Like, Really? Really? Like, I mean, it's basically legal everywhere. How is it illegal in Texas? I don't know. Also, the other charge is that he's, yeah, you can't leave your Lamborghini in the middle of the freeway and then walk away with a bunch of guns, I guess, right? Yeah. Or no, they left the guns in the car, you said, right? No, I think that's why he walked away. I think he was, like, weighing the, like, what's going to be the less, like, it's yeah, pick your poison. Yeah, what a nice guy. Like, maybe really I, I probably consider should. that. But, again, this is all alleged. We don't know anything yet, so. <laughs> yeah. But, again, again yeah. he, he really looks thoughtful. like he's facing an uphill battle. I wouldn't be shocked. He's probably going to face a suspension from the league regardless. Yeah, yeah. We'll I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the whole thing has been lingering forever. Also, he didn't turn himself in right away, so that's not a good look, right? That's right. not. No, good. he's he's you gonna look kind of guilty when sure. you just kind of hide out for a hot 100%. minute and yep. play your options. Yeah, yep, absolutely. So, I don't um, know, guys. I heard he was very pleasant. Yeah, he's a nice guy. <laughs> I heard he was a pleasant guy. He's a nice guy. He's a, he is a nice guy. He, he wow. plays with Bronny James. No, yeah. <laughs> he is. Nice. Um, so, uh, Mano, we were talking about Cam Newton and Shannon Sharp. Yeah, uh, I love Club Shay Shay. He's really bringing out some bangers with Cat Williams, and then uh, now he's got Cam Newton. Yeah, he there. some fantastic guests. For Quick sure. question. Quick question, and then we'll get to the segment. Mm -hmm. What the fuck is Cam Newton wearing? These days, I don't even know what it is. I don't even know where you find these outfits. These hats look like he's a train conductor, but also looks like maybe he um, yeah. he owns like a submarine, and then also has like uh, he's going to space. Yeah, like yeah, he's, he's got a zeppelin a somewhere. Yeah, he's doing uh, a lot. And, uh, like I don't know. I don't know what what is it, what is this look? I don't know what this look it's is. Strange. I don't know. When I spent right? time around him, he didn't have that look. He's he was a good a, dude. He's, but he, very good dude. He's, he's yeah, I mean nice he was. I don't know. I mean the hats don't have anything to do with it. Unfortunately, like the persona he's built up, I think did cost him some years at the end of his career yeah i think a lot of teams were like if this guy just kind of comes in does his thing and isn't so like boisterous and stuff maybe we'll give him a shot but because of, uh, i think a lot of the decisions he's made you know in that other trying to his brand and his star i think that did cost him a couple of years i think he's still he wouldn't be the worst backup quarterback on any court and any team in the league right now well the, the whole thing that he was playing i think he played with uh aaron hernandez and tim tebow for like one season I spent believe. a little time with the patriots yeah. um um was it the Patriots? But didn't he play a little bit for Florida too? I think he did. He was in, he was there as a freshman when Tebow. I'm sorry, I didn't know what you meant. Yeah, 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 that's what I meant. Uh, Aaron Hernandez with the Patriots too. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, he was a little down there for a little time. He, he said that was the. He said when he played there, he said that was the most um, out of control locker room. Oh, bro, I mean. Yeah. I can't even imagine, Think Chris, because you've been in some, you've been in some locker rooms. Not but like, like that. Not no like locker that. room like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, good locker room. Like, I feel like, like, I swear to God, uh, Ray, I feel like mm. there's a couple drug dealers in there, and then there's coaches, yeah. and then there's recruiters. Like, it just sounds like it's just a hodgepodge, like DJ Snake's in the background playing. Like, they <laughs> yeah, got Steve Aoki machines. throwing like, cakes. It just sounds like yeah. it's, it's just chaos. And just off the top of your head, guys that we know were, like, were – Characters. You got the Pouncy Twins. You got totally. Aaron Hernandez. Right, you got right. Percy Harvin. They had everybody. Riley everybody. Cooper, who had his little racial thing, obviously. And then the thing about the power of Tebow to kind of manage to wrangle all these crazy characters and and win national championships with, with the power lunatics. of God. That's what. Crazy yeah. man. Yeah. Meanwhile, Tebow's in his in the little corner of his locker room, just, <clears throat> and in the locker room, just like, please God, please God, get me out of here. <laughs> get me out of here. <laughs> get me out of here. Um, 
Can we play the clip real quick? Because I thought this was interesting about what Cam Newton said about the difference between him and Kirk Cousins what and the? and between white Falcons and black. I mean, hey, Kirk Cousins. Turn it up. They could have got Cam Newton, Justin Fields, and Michael Vick. What is he wearing? For that price. It's like the hat you from Key and Peele where they just they, they try to outdo their hats and they're just Jackson ridiculous. Put. But we're not talking about that. And I'm not saying that to, to, to shame Kirk Cousins. My take personally was Cam's getting old. He ain't getting no younger. He's 32 at the time. He's coming off a shoulder injury. Lynn's Frank. Cool. All things that are not quote unquote <clears throat> serious injuries. They're not career ending. Career ending. If you tore your Achilles back when you was playing, Oops. you're done. Yeah, it was, you were never the same player. So now you're giving this person the money coming off an of injury? So how am I supposed to feel? Because the same questions and the same concerns that you had with me. Obviously, you done not like overlook that. You see, don't have, don't have those concerns. Looks like he made Chippy Pop, and it's Cousins, ready. And it's ready. It is. It is. It is. It's hat. It is hat. He yeah. probably would have got more. All right, you can cut it. Mano, is this a is this a black white thing? Is this another race bait thing? Is this another clickbait thing? Well, look, by he seemed to insinuate by using the names Justin Fields himself and Michael Vick, it almost kind of seemed like that's what he was getting at. But where he's missing the point is in a passing league, which it is now. Kirk's just a far better passer than Cam was. Cam was a fantastic football player. Kirk's a far better passer. Kirk has th uh, five 30 touchdown seasons to Cam's one. He's got seven 4,000 yard passing seasons to Cam's one. I think that's what Cam's missing. And Cam's game was predicated on movement. So sure, if he tore his Achilles towards the end of his career, it's a death sentence for a guy like Cam who can't just sit in the pocket and just carve you up throwing the ball. But with a guy like Kirk, he's never been a big mover. So just navigate the pocket, get the ball out with that clock in your head, and he's going to be fine. So I don't think Cam's picking up on that, unless he's, and again, trying to, trying to insinuate something. So right. I, I don't know, man. Weird world today. Everything seems to insinuate it something. It is a weird world. Um, also, it's, it's weird. His uniforms are weird. They're very weird. <laughs> it looks like he just walked into his closet and put everything on and walked down and was like, yeah, that's it. You know <laughs> you're, what I mean? You're doing good, Cam. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but when you have a lot of money and you look like Cam, he's a good-looking guy. Uh, I guess it's fine. Uh, speaking of uniforms, uh, the NFL is changing their policy, and I guess they're not being as strict, right? You said, Chris, they're allowing three helmets, <coughs> yeah. right? They're allowing three helmets. So break that down for us real quick, please. Yeah, so real quick, I guess in a nutshell, people don't realize how like harsh the NFL's uniform policy is, and they're very tight to change it. I mean, when we go out there, a lot of times we'll go during pregame warm-ups, and we'll go back to the locker room for a five-minute, you know, just regroup before we get out to the field, and there'll be a list of guys like, number 17, your socks are too low. Number um, There's a, 41, that's a real thing? yeah. Number forty-one, change your cleats. They're not the right colors, or they have the wrong logo on them. So, so what happened though? A lot of guys. I mean, to cut you up. I'm sorry, yeah, but there no was, there's guys that um, have like customized cleats. You can, you can wear those for pre. Wear them during pregame. If you, you wear them during the game, the... you're just gonna pay. That's so, dude. That's yeah. really? so crazy. What well, they call the NFL no fun league. So it's nice to because see them finally. But the thing is this, what we forget too, is that when they do like these third jerseys and like the pink stuff for October. NFL monetizes we all that. Know, we all know where that money is going. NFL monetizes going that. So, but I don't, know about, um, I don't know about the helmets. Like the, so that's the thing. The new uniform policy says there could be a third helmet this year, which is pretty sick. But um, yeah, I don't know how the, that works. You look at the Oregon Ducks. You look at, like, Rutgers. Yeah, you sick. look at all these guys. They're having a great time. And then the NFL Maryland. is like, like the, okay, nothing against the Arizona Cardinals, but your logo, the Cardinal, one, it's super small. You can make it, like, like I don't know. I'm an artist, so I always think, like, you could make it bigger or, like, I don't know. We give it some flames. Tell me like it is, Brady. It Something looks stupid. Listen, all right. Your uniforms suck. suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I just think we could. There, like you said, the no fun league. It could be a lot more fun. Yeah. Um. I don't know, but as long as we're ending racism, we're good with that. At the end of the, you know, at the end of the day, right? Yo, cams, you. cams. The third ones, it, it's gonna go crazy. Yeah. He's hopefully. gonna have a feather in it. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Feather sick. in the helmet. Feather in the helmet. Yeah. Big time. Yep. Uh, Terrell Suggs is in the news. Just got arrested. Uh, two felonies. It's <laughs> a lot. A lot of. A lot of guys are just doing going some extra, extracurricular yeah. activity. I don't know if this is CTE esque, you know, but being it's definitely teammates with Ray Lewis. Maybe you know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That slid under the rug too. But anyway. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> we didn't hear anything about that either. <laughs> What's your take on this, man? Where you at with uh, Terrell Suggs? Where I'm at with Terrell Suggs is he's the biggest, nastiest dude I've ever seen in real life. Like I was on a field with him, and he was probably the most impressive looking guy. 
They said he had a gun, and to have to pull a gun at Starbucks yeah. on somebody. Maybe, I just, get, maybe they get his order Terrell Su- I just can't imagine Terrell <laughs> Suggs needing a gun to beat any one person up. So it's crazy i don't know too much about it though so don't yeah. don't take what the, you know what they serious. got his coffee wrong you know i don't blame yeah. him you know he's like i said <laughs> latte <laughs> he said, yeah god forbid terrell suggs doesn't get his cappuccino i don't so. know man maybe he's just going through it you know it's just <laughs> side. listen everybody sometimes tuesdays are just not with they're just not fun they're just not fun uh ufc 300 300 is coming up are we excited about this raymond are we pumped what's we are. uh what's, we're, we what's are. give us the give us the breakdown listen. Mr. UFC yourself. Listen, I'm very excited for this, this card right now. It's jam-packed, stacked wow. from head to toe. All right, give me your you least. Have your, give me your least to your to your uh, most favorite. I mean, you have a you have a card. The card is opening with Cody Garbrandt yeah. and uh, Figueroa. Two sick. former world champions are opening the card. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of casuals here are upset, of course, because Dana White previously said that there was going to be a huge announcement here for the title fight. They were working on George St. Pierre, Khabib, a lot of uh, Connor, a lot of things didn't fall into place. Regardless, this is a stacked card, which is hence some of the hate coming from this card. But overall, look, you got Jim Miller fighting Bobby Green after yeah. the fight. Jim Miller fought it, on UFC 100, 200, now making a record at 300. Jessica Andrade, a former champion, too. Correct. She's you on have the tons of former yeah. champions here and upcoming, you know, stars. You have, Ho- you have Holly Holm facing Kayla mm-hmm. Harrison, who's making her debut Olympic mm-hmm. gold uh, mm-hmm. judo. Uh, uh, she she uh, gold medal in judo, yeah. um, c- crossing over. You have Yuri Prochaska's versus Ra- Ra- Radic. Like this the, is a crazy. The part. home Harrison fight's going to be a big Styles make fights fight. It's almost very to similar to Ronda Rousey. Ra- Rousey. Yeah. You Correct. sent me that picture of Harrison. That girl looked like <clears throat> yeah, she's a, yoked. She looked like she yoked. hasn't had carbs and, since she was born. Yeah, she's huge. <laughs> well, she's you could just be solid. honest and say she looks like a man, but oh, um, <laughs> you said it. I mean, <laughs> we're all seeing, we were all thinking. it. I was seeing something on Twitter yesterday that said, "Do we think this card outsells?" Connor Khabib. No. And I was like, No, it won't. As great as this card is top to bottom, and, and, and as, no. if you're not a diehard, though, there really is you no needle mover at the top of this card. You know what's sad? Because it's, it's going to happen later today when they announce Connor McGregor versus Michael Chandler at the presser. Um, 303 is when Connor will make his return. <clears throat> that will beat out 300. For I believe sure. that. For yeah. sure. Which, and, and this top to bottom top. is such a crazy card. It's though. a crazy card, but, you know, it, it, there's not that, uh. That's it. There's yeah. not that one yeah. person like and, a George, a Khabib, a. Uh, um, you know, Connor coming in there as the main event. And you know what I noticed too? Or John Jones. I haven't even seen like a ton of like shit talk like I do or like real advert. How much do these guys hate each other? Like no, usually Hill, I haven't even seen Jam- any of that. You know, it's like, funny. They just released it. Jamal Hill went up to Alex Pereira yesterday. Sh- I'm like a just fan, like, dude. Hey, can you just sign my shirt? Oh, I have terrible. everyone on the card here so signing my, my oh, shirt. So embarrassing. And just tapping them up. And That's like, you remind me when As- Aspinall did that with John Jones. I don't like that. I hate when these guys don't yeah, be a you fan. Know what? You're not a fan. I miss the days when Conor McGregor was throwing, you know, um, dollies at, at Khabib's bus and shit. Well, like, and I, e- even if it's not Connor, it's, who's like the master master of like mind games and stuff. Yeah. Like, if I'm an undercard guy and I'm trying, I thought Colby did. Name? Colby did a great job with this because Colby was a good fighter before we ever heard him talk a little crazy. Right. And then he realized like I got to do something to get people interested in my fights. Right. So even if I'm not like, I would just. I would be making something out of nothing just so that people care to watch me, you know? And I haven't seen any of that this week. It's going to be interesting. Of course, a lot of it, like I said, when you're a fighter, a top-level fighter, you have to take into the perspective you're not just a fighter, you're an entertainer. Of course. And that comes outside of the fighting as well. You know, like I said, the press conference, people actually look forward. Like when Kobe was fighting, uh, uh, you know, uh, Kamar Usman, he would stir up stuff. Even Leon Ed- Yeah, Masvidal, Leon Edwards. People were can't wait for those two to clash on the presser. So tonight, there's not really too much hype on the presser that normally would be for at least UFC 300 because there wasn't too much hype or animosity built between a lot of the fighters today. And if you so. remember when Conor fought Khabib, even though it seemed personal, and it probably was to it Khabib. Was. It was 100% Well, it wasn't personal. to Conor because Conor got his ass beat and said on the ground, just business, brother, just business. And he understood, like... I don't hate Khabib for any reason, but I know if I pretend like I hate Khabib, you think it was personal counter to Khabib for whatever reason? It, it, it I felt like the other yeah, way. It I, was. Think it, yeah, personal, I think it was. There was, was two. There Between was a lot of. Khabib there was, said anything personal to Connor? Just he you said drink just a lot, business, bro. of course, because he was getting his ass kicked. But at the end of the day, there was a lot of stuff that had to do with his manager outside extracurricular Ali. stuff. Ali, yeah. correct? With a he lot smacked of, around. Um, there was didn't a lot he smack of po- his partner around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, Artem, and there was a Artem. lot of politics. Involved, yeah. In with that involves Putin too sure. as well. So there was a lot of stuff that actually, and with you know the, you know the star power of Conor McGregor, the levels right. of it, correct. Yeah. And there was clashes outside of the ring that no one really knew, and you know unfortunately that really brought that. And of course after you know Khabib 
did beat Connor. If you saw, there was a huge fight outside. Oh of yeah, it too. for People sure. People started well, fist fighting. I outside felt like of it. it was personal, Khabib to Connor, but I felt like Connor understood the whole time. It's a show. It's Maybe a, I'm wrong. But. Yeah, no, no. There, it was definitely personal levels, but of course, for Connor, he wanted to leave it right then and there. That wasn't Khabib's. Yeah, you know, and yeah, it's that's, not Khabib's style. You don't do that yeah. to those guys. And it's funny yeah. after the fist fight afterwards, after Khabib's teammates jumped and uh, attacked Connor afterwards. Uh, Dana White said, hey, do you want to press charges on these guys? And Connor nodded and says, he goes, no, yeah, it's, all, of course not. it's all business. That was that guy Armin Tsukarian or something? No, no, no. Like? Ar- yeah, but you know, also, Armin Sarukin's actually fighting uh, this Isn't weekend. he the one who jumped the cage and cheap shot at Connor from no, behind? No, no, that's just another Dagestanian guy. Yeah, but it also shows that Connor's also, it also shows that Connor's, a, he's a showman. He's a showman. And also he knows that even uh, bad controversy is is still good, is good press. Correct. You know what I mean? So, um that was one of my favorite fights for sure. I also Connor. I also heard Connor party his balls off the night before. I know a ton of stories of Connor partying, and I know people that have partied with him. Um, the guy's an absolute. What you see is what you get out of Connor. Totally. Um, but like I said, regards into UFC 300, we don't have a main star per se. Of course, Alex Pereira. You know he's two division world champion. You know, but he doesn't talk English. He's very stone like. Um, you know, you don't have too much hype here, at least for the fighters that doesn't bring that extra oomph I heard, yeah, to yeah. UFC I just, And I think where that hurts is like a diehard like you and a guy like me who really likes it a lot will buy the pay-per-view. I Correct. think it's for the people who are like half in, half out. Correct. Those are the people that you're going to lose without that it's box gonna, office. It's going to be interesting to see what the pay-per-view buys are yeah. because it, I see it doing well, but I don't see it reaching that, right. that number where is that this the fight UFC at? predicts. Where is it at? Uh, Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, hey, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to be front and center for that. That'll be fun to watch this weekend. Yeah, we're going to watch. We're going to watch this weekend. It's going to be your birthday. It's we can my celebrate. Birthday. Yep. Brady can heavily bet on these guys. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to watch you. I'm going to watch you bet. I don't bet on UFC. Absolutely. There's no way. I don't know anything about these guys. <laughs> Except that I know Holly Holmes kind of hot. All right. Uh, moving on to our good, the bad, and do we care? Um, this, this I thought was really cool. The um, Savannah Bananas. Savannah Bananas. Hey. These guys are great. They sell out. They sell at actual stadiums um, when they go on the road. And they do a lot of crazy stuff, not just baseball. But I thought this was, it was one of the coolest catches I think I've ever seen in baseball. Really? Um, yeah, watch this. Look at what they're wearing. Nice outfit. Speaking of uniforms, right? <laughs> right. Watch this. Throws his glove. Kind of looks like Daniel. No way. Daniel, Isn't that crazy? Dude, How crazy that's is that? unbelievable. Wow. Did you see that? that? It looks like Daniel, wow. is that you? The only <laughs> way to do the that's the Brinkett's cousin right there. Wow. Do it with How the crazy is that? <clears throat> that's impressive. Mm-hmm. How many times you gotta you gotta try to do that during the day? You're like, let's do the backflip thing again. And you're like, fucking, it's never gonna happen. But it happened in, a, in the in the game, which is cool. Mano, moving on. What's your good, big guy? All right, my good is Yankees great Mariano Rivera came out and he publicly endorsed Donald Trump in a world where it's like not cool to do that, it's hard to do that. He said, he's been a friend of mine for a million years before, so I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put my support behind him and, and endorse him. And I think it's cool how a lot of athletes, you think um, Dana White, think Colby Covington, Nick Bosa, there's a ton of these guys who, you know, you, you imagine that what, what Donald Trump kind of stands for is what brought a lot of these current athletes the same type of you know, habits and stuff they, they put into their, into their routine and regimen, and I think it's cool that they're finding, finding that they're able to say it out loud now where it wasn't for a while able yeah. to be doing that. they you know? get filleted for that. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. And I'm sure Mariano will, but he's been like a perfect ambassador for baseball, the first unanimous MVP to go in on his first, his first try. So he's had a perfect record, so it's, it, there's nothing you can really say about him. He's not crazy. He's not, so it's cool to see a guy like that kind of step out and, and you know, take the bullets. Yeah. Ray, what do you have for your good? Yeah, I, uh, for my good, I have Kyle Landy. This is the most Jack kid with Down syndrome I've ever oh, seen boy. in my life. Here we go. Um, <laughs> just, 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 <laughs> Chris, just look at this kid. Look at this. He's a physical specimen. Yeah, he's a bodybuilder I mean, coming pretty, out of Canada. That is pretty great. He might have the Downs, but he's up, dude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you nailed it. You know, he's, he's, he's up jacked. for sure. What's up, brother? Look at this kid. Dude, Jesus. I would kill for, for genetics like that. Yeah. Kid. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Daniel. Oh. All right. you, Daniel, too listen, far? Well, you, listen too what he has, you make up in beautiful hair, <laughs> yeah, my friend. You, you have gorgeous well, hair. Yep, you could do a, you could do a shampoo man, you commercial. you wish you had his genetics. Uh, moving sure. on to our bad. Moving on to our bad. This will go right back to Cam Newton real quick. Cam keeps it 100 when he talks about how he messed up and where it went wrong for his, his career, if you will. Club station. Time. I'm me. And it ended up, I bet it on myself. 
and it didn't work out right. And I don't have nobody else to blame but me. Even though I'm saying to myself, those are bad situations, I knew those situations as it was arising, still having full confidence in myself to say, I can do this. Yeah, it, but see, Cam, <laughs> and one of the great Chinese women said, yeah, uh, you gotta know his limitations. No. It's like if you know a female is toxic, and still you know she toxic. He ain't gonna be toxic with no go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cut it. All right, what do you have, Mano, for your bad? What you got, big guy? All right, I got perpetual crybaby wide receiver Stephon Diggs. Uh oh. Right, the the Buffalo Bills just they just traded him to the Houston Texans last week. He's never happy. He hasn't been happy his whole time here. Dan, can we pull that that uh, tweet up real quick? And his most recent like is kind of frying Buffalo Bills fans who were super supportive of him the whole time. The Bills are known to have like some of the most supportive, team-loving fans. They donate to their charities. They come out for all the games, and They're they nice love their people. team. Yeah, Buffalo people, they love their team perpetually, and Bills low-key got the worst fan base. Y'all bitter as F in the comments, and that's Stefan Diggs, the crybaby's most recent like. Yeah. So what a bum, dude. The, yeah, the guy, I don't know, his career is going down fast, but – um it should be interesting. Ray, what do you have for your bad? Yeah, I, I just carry it on the... Don't the, do, the, not another kid with Down syndrome. <laughs> no, but it's another yeah. disability. <laughs> oh, no. Another, Ray. Oh, geez. Oh, Jesus, dude. I just saw this, and I, I just don't understand trainers, at least for people with disabilities, why they're... Why they're hitting the pads like this? You know what? From now on, we have to censor your good to bad. Do we care? Yeah, is that what's going to happen? Then we're gonna have you have to, to look do you need a timeout? I, I just don't understand why why trainers would do this with 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 kids with disabilities. Um, for, with this clip, but yeah, like we got we gotta yeah. This is very. It's a tough Ray, one. This is a tough one. To yeah, watch. I just don't understand that. You know. All right, get rid of it. <laughs> get rid of it. <laughs> Get it out of here. But you know, good for her. Yeah, no, no, no. I enjoy it. Yeah. Listen, you know, she's going to hit something. Um, (laughs) All right. (laughs) Moving on to Do We Care? Do We Care? All right. This kid is a phenom. This kid is a phenom, and I love this kid because he's making – this kid's worth a ton of money. He kicks – he just beat Sauce Gardner in Madden, by the way. And I'm surprised no one knows who Twitch is. He's a phenom. Uh, Sketch Twitch. Can you play the clip real quick? He talks shit to all of these guys. Celebrities, celebrity What's football up, players. All of them. What's up, brother? Watch him. Oh, so they're all doing what his signature, his signature moves are. What's his name? Sketch? Yeah. Welcome into the Twitch the entire time. It's Sketch Twitch. Yeah, it's his name. Oh, okay. Okay. What's up, brother? Oh, you can't play it. So everyone does it. He's a phenom. He's a phenom. Everyone from, like, weather... Weather Channel guys to like guys playing rugby. He's and he plays against everyone in the world, and he kicks all their asses. And uh, just good for him. I mean, the kid's super talented at playing Madden. He's like one of the best players in the world. When they all do the, they all do the. What's up, brother? You have to watch him. It's great. Wow. All right, moving on. Chris, what, what do nice you have guy. for? Do we care? Um, I do we care is Julian Edelman, and they're talking about how he was offered a chance. Brady called him when he and Gronk went down to Tampa. Asked him, brother, would you like me to bring you down? Can we do this? And Julian Edelman was like, nah, man, I'm a one-jersey type of guy. It was cool. I thought it was awesome that he was like, nah, I want, it means something to me to only wear the Patriots jersey. What do we think about guys kind of – do we care about guys wearing two, three, four jerseys? Or does it still mean something if you're a guy who wears the same jersey your whole career? No, I think you want to stay with the same jersey your whole career 100% because that's special to you. That's your number you grew up I with. I agree with that. So if you keep moving around different numbers, you know, then <clears> – <throat> I don't know. Well, because I look at the Caleb Williams thing that's happening. Um, well, he's his number is thirteen, but also Keenan Allen's number is thirteen. Well, I guess I mean like team jerseys. Like, do you think it means something oh. to stay with a team for your entire career? Like, he oh. was like, I never want to wear a jersey other than the Patriots jersey. Um, I think it's cool. I think Jeter yeah, did it. I think, I think Kobe did it. Yeah, I think it's I cool. Think that's cool. It says a lot also about yeah. your career. Maybe you could go play. Somewhere. Probably could have played another two years with the Bucks, but right. he was like, Nah, man, I like that. I'm just a Patriot. For sure. The thing that bummed me out about Jordan is I hated seeing him in a Wizards yeah, jersey. Terrible. It just didn't make sense. Yeah, it's to terrible. Me. So okay. that broke me. Uh, Ray, take us home. What do you got? And please, please, <laughs> please keep Ray. us on the air. Please, please Ray. Ray. Please, Ray. Sorry. I swear I should have checked these. You know what? I should have checked these before you came on the So there's show. another kid with Down syndrome. No, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know? It's uh, it's uh, uh, with the Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight. I just wanted to bring back a nice commercial. Mike Tyson had trouble pronouncing the entire time during the shoot, and uh, I thought it was very. Intriguing, at least. Let's see what we got up. here. So, oh boy, turn it up. McNeely on American Cablevision. Vision Cable. 
Hi, watch me be Peter McNeely on Vision Cable Vision. <laughs> watch on. Hi, I'm Mike Tyson. Watch me be Peter McNeely on Vision Cable. Dude, imagine that. Ready? Hi, I'm Mike Tyson. Watch me be Peter McNeely. Yeah. Hey, imagine having ready, to be ready, the ready, back. Hi, I'm Mike Tyson. Watch me be Peter McNeely on Comcast Cable Vision. <laughs> Comcast. Imagine Comcast. having to be the runt behind the camera who has to tell that Mike time. Tyson, do it again, do it again, do it again. Hi, I'm Mike Tyson. Watch me fight Peter McNeely on Cock Cable. Hi, I'm Mike Tyson. Watch me be Peter McNeely. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mike Tyson. Watch me beat Peter McNeely on Samsonite Cable. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> he just, he just can't is, he, just, is he making shit up? Yeah, or? he doesn't know what's happening. What the? F Look at him. He just it's pushed Doc him down. King. That was Doc King. Wow. Ray, oh, Ray again, Jesus. has yeah. the clips of the week. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, we Again, we put together the very best show we possibly can for you guys, and we're so happy that you uh, watched. And you uh, please tell your friends, uh, subscribe right here on the little subscribe button. Um, check out our reels. Check out Chris has a lot of good reels. Ray has a lot of good stuff on UFC. Um, and when Malik's back, he has a lot of good stuff too that he does for us as well. Um, tell your friends, spread the word. Chris, take us out. Do you have any parting words for the people at home? No, I appreciate you guys rocking with us today, uh, checking out our stuff during the week. Guys, we're going to put a QR code out during this week at some point. Please share it, click it, subscribe if you're not, and get your friends to do it too. We grow as you uh, You grow and we grow together. Let's do it. Yep. Ray, what do you No, got? yeah, thank you. Had a great show with you guys today. Phenomenal, as always. Uh, stay tuned for, I know I dropped the news for UFC 300 press conference news released, and uh, we'll be watching the fights and celebrating your birthday, Brady. Thank so. you. Yep. And Daniel, go ahead. Do you have any parting words for the people at home? What do you have? Yeah, hey, uh, drink oh, some vault. Guy. You know, check out the Valuetainment YouTube and making some stuff on there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's been our show. Like I said, I've been your host, Brady Matthews. Uh, it's my birthday weekend. We're going to go have some fun. We're going to watch some UFC, and we're going to have a lot of good stuff for you guys uh, coming this time next week. So you guys have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Peace.